For many people, Easter is at best an irrelevance. In better times, it would have been the relevance with a two-day public holiday attached. There was a phone in the other day and the lady asked, is the virus one proof of the non-existence of God? And I wonder how many are thinking about faith for the first time, not because of Easter, but because the way we're having to live our lives is challenging so much of how we live our lives in better normal times. There's no doubt that events such as these bring out both the best and the worst in people. Just look at the huge concern of caring for the vulnerable and the marginalised who have been affected by the virus even more than usual. We are more aware of those who work so hard to care for our health more than ever. I spoke with a family recently who have been unable to have children. They dismissed adoption, but now they told me are rethinking their priorities. As the human cost of the coronavirus mounts nationally and globally, some of the things we thought important don't matter that much, and some of the things we dismissed are worth more of our time. Whether a society believes in eternal life will affect the way it lives and will affect its values too. A society which has lost faith lives very differently. I used to have a GP colleague I used to work very closely with as a curate who once said to me that for a Christian, death is not the worst thing that can happen. So much of our reaction to the coronavirus is geared to the saving of life all life at any cost. Some may argue that this is the mark of a compassionate society, but to be compassionate may not require the saving of life, all life, to the detriment of all other circumstances. In fact, it's the mark of a society which not only has lost faith, but has lost humility. It is a society which no longer holds to the sovereignty of God and instead idolizes its own power and its achievements. Death must be avoided, it says, and we act as a community which lives in fear. At the end of his time in the wilderness, Jesus' second temptation is to throw himself off the temple heights, to force God's hand and to make God conform to our will. It puts us in the centre and in charge of our life. A faithful society will exercise both humility and true compassion. It accepts the sovereignty of God and the limits of its own ingenuity and power. The resurrection affirms the sovereignty of God over death, suffering and all things. They are limited and finite. They end, maybe not in our timing and the way we want, but they do end. And so as Christians, we need not fear sickness, suffering and death. Of course, sickness, suffering and death are all things we would rather not have to endure. They hurt. But we need not fear them. We are living not in human time, measured in years or decades, but in God's time of eternity. Happy Easter. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia.